Listen to the sound difference between the open headers and then the Antar version collector from Schoenfeld. Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Before I go off to PRI, I thought I'd give you a tech video. And this one actually is about headers and collectors. Now, yes, we did use the LS engine, my dyno mule for this testing, but I think this might apply to more than just the LS engine. This just happened to be the engine we used to test it. Um, kind of give you a recap of what the engine is. It's an LS 408, not 4.8. So 408 cubic inches, 430 bore, four inch stroke. Pro Max, large bore LS3 heads, it had a Super Victor intake manifold up top, 4150,000 CFM carburetor. And at the time of testing, whenever the cam challenge was testing, we were using a one and three quarter header made to fit a car, an actual car, and a three inch collector on that one. That was how it was baseline tested with. And the camshaft was an Urson at this time, a 234, 246, 621 lift, 108 lobe separation. That was what was used for this. And you might say, why did you even do this testing? Well, this happened right after the, the actual last day of the cam challenge. Because if you look at all the cam cars that were done, and you're like, man, some of them are really close, and you would figure with that much duration split, or some should, or that much more duration that some of them have, you should have seen more power. So why didn't we? So luckily, one of the competitors, he had sent in a bigger set of headers. Because again, I was testing one and three quarter chassis headers, you know, kind you'd run in a car. He sent in a set of two inch headers, but they're dyno or sprit car headers. They were actually a longer length, three inch collector, two inch diameter on the header. Because it wanted to see if maybe that was a limiting factor, because maybe that would show up. It did gain power. But the ultimate thing that he did, he sent in three different collectors. We have a 10 inch, about a 22 inch long one, and then this Schoenfield anti reversion collector piece. And I tested all three, and I promise you the results are a little shocking. Um, but enough of me talking, that's what was tested. Now that we get to show it, but let me, first off, let me show you a picture of the, uh, of the Schoenfeld anti-reversion collector. This is coming directly from their, um, website. Unfortunately, I couldn't find pictures of the inside of that, um, Schoenfeld anti-reversion collector. But the next time I go to the dyno, I'll take a picture of that because it's still there. Otherwise, I'd have it right now on the video, which would make great. But essentially what it is, it's got, it shrinks down inside and there's a step there. So if the pressure wave starts coming back up, it hits the outsides. Anyway, I'll show you the next time I have. It looks kind of like a muffler, but it's not a muffler. Now, we're going to get ready to show the dyno results. And all of them are in this book right here. That's, there's only one available, and I'll put a link in the description. But you can purchase this hardcover book but like i said there's only one available right now that's left i am selling the digital version too and this is all of the ls testing that was done this year and you could tell this book is it's thick but anyway the one we're going to go to right now we'll skip all the way to this here we go so this is our baseline this is the well this is not the baseline but we'll get to this this is with the two inch headers now so here in a second, I'll show you the comparison between the one and three quarter and two inch, but we're just gonna start with, these are the sprint car headers. So these are the nice headers. This is the Urson cam. But one of the things that people pointed out whenever you look at the videos, and I'll try to put a picture in here right now. If you notice, we have the exhaust system that goes all the way from the header that collects to this large super chamber muffler that the dyno uses to kind of keep things somewhat quieter. So one of the thoughts was, well, it has to be the exhaust system that's causing some weird things and that's why it's losing power. So the first thing was the two inch headers went on with the full exhaust system. And just to give you an idea, just to show you some raw numbers, don't worry, I'll show you overlays in a minute. 
630 horsepower, 6,400 RPM. And the torque was 563 at 5,200. So the next test we did was like, okay, let's take off the exhaust. We're just gonna take off the exhaust and see if that changed anything. So there's no collector on at that point. So once the exhaust is on, the collector's gone. I mean, the it just ends at the collector. And you're like, well, did it contaminate the room? No, I mean, yes it does, but the carburetor has this hat that's on it that goes up and it vent gets air from the other room. So it's not drawing air from that room. That make Hopefully that makes sense. You probably see in the pictures too. But anywho, so let's try it without it. Cause we were like, maybe it'll be a restriction with this exhaust pipe on, let's just see. Remember, so we made 630. So here we are, we just took it off. There's no extension and it did pick up a little uh, we're now at 633 at 6400 and torque I think it's about the same at 563 let me just double check here yeah 563 so it didn't really didn't change there right we'll get to the overlays in a minute now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just start testing some collectors because one of the biggest things I keep hearing is you know if you add like an 18 inch collector you can gain like 10 or 20 horsepower because I'm not saying who keeps spreading that on the internet, but that ain't always the truth. And this is a perfect example. So next page we go to, this is a 10 inch collector. So we had no, no collector, now we have 10 inch. We lost power, 629, but we gained one foot pound of torque, 564. So the 10 inch collector lost power over having no collector, okay? Like, well, that's because it's too short. You need a longer one. All righty. So the next one, this one actually, oh, got to get this thing to turn right. There we go. This is a 22-inch long collector. This is extremely long, just somewhere out there. 631.5. Looks like it's making almost the same power. What about torque? 562. It's within the same, right? It's looking close. You're like, what are we doing? 10 inch, 22 inch made a little difference, right? When you're talking about peak power. Don't, go, don't get me wrong, I'm gonna show you the overlays in a minute. But for those so far that think if you add a collector, you are going to gain 20 horsepower by an 18 inch collector extension, you're mistaken. But let's do the anti-reversion one now. This is the anti-reversion one. It measures eight inches long. Um, so this one I made, you guessed it, 632. That's right, the same as the rest. What about torque? 562, same as the rest, ugh, right? So all that, you're like, man, you just look at the peaks and ain't that far off. Now let's get to comparisons. Yeah, get me here, start here. This is why this book is amazing. It's got everything in here. This is the comparison, by the way, between the two inch header and the one and three quarter. So if we look at the red line, this is the two inch header. As you can tell, and the black line's a one and three quarter chassis header. Sprint car header, chassis header. You could tell down low, the bigger header tubes hurt it. So from 4,000 to 4,500, not a fan. Beyond that, so about 40, it looks like six, it's the winner. Winning and winner, chicken dinner, by far. Big pickups, right? Okay. Next comparison though. This is the open header versus the full exhaust system. So like what I just showed you the very first chart, I had the full exhaust hooked up to our big buffers that the dyno uses. Now we just did the open header. This is where it gets strange. If you look from here up, the differences are nothing. So red members open header, black is full exhaust. So from here up, they're virtually identical. Not very much peak power gained. It's here, the lower. Look how much it gained taken off that exhaust system that we had. It picks up quite a bit at the lower RPMs, but by 4,700, it made no difference. This is what that dyno chart didn't show you. So looking at peaks, not much of a change. Looking down here, that's a change. But let's now compare, compare the collectors though. Here's all the collectors, so everything. So you've got the eight inch anti-reversion, that's in red, there. No extension, green which is down here. The 22 inch extension, the black down here. Full exhaust down here. And then the eight inch extension is the blue there. Look at it closer. If you notice, they are tracking virtually together 
from pretty much, you can call it 5200 on, they don't really change. There's a little bit difference here in the little, in the middle, but not much. Peaks, not at all. So if you think you're gonna add an 18 inch extension or a 12 inch extension and you're just gonna gain 18 horsepower, you won't. From the testing I have done, this is all it changes down here. So if you look, this is interesting because here, when you're actually racing, you probably wouldn't gain anything. But what you feel driving is here. If you look at this, now we've got differences. Obvious differences too. So which one was the worst? The full exhaust. This is the torque, by the way. Horsepower should track with it evidently or obviously. But anyway, the full exhaust system that's on the dyno was the worst down low. What was the next one? The 22 inch extension was the next worst. Okay, no extension did better than those having the extension. So that was the third worst, but it still beat having a full exhaust and a 22 inch extension. Now here's where it gets weird. That red right here is the eight inch anti-reversion. That one does better than having the no extensions. And then the blue, which is the eight inch extension. So that's the interesting part. These are the same length. So I hate to say it, if you're buying that Schoenfeld thing, just the eight inch collector extension was actually worth more power than having your anti-reversion one on there. I know that's weird, right? Same length. Yes, I measured. The anti-reversion should be picking up power. It does not, it's worse. So right through here, you could tell the green line, by the way, this is the no extension. If you look at just the start of the pull, about 4,000, you could see that it's, it's down, but look, it makes a jump up. So actually at 4,400 RPM, the no extension is better than all the other collector extensions and full exhaust. See how it is? Right through there, it's way better than all the rest. And then they start converging and then they're all virtually the same. So hopefully that gave you some insight into some header testing, especially with the extensions. I should point this out too though. This is only one combination. So what I have not tested, but I'm sure I will because I never stop testing unless I go broke, which who knows when that'll happen. It gets closer by the day. But what I haven't tested so far, the, new, the LS right now, these had the um, Promax large bore 245 heads on it. Right now, the if you went to go visit the Dino Mule, it actually has the AFR Mongoose CNC ported head, which is the best LS3 heads I've had on my bench. And they make a lot more power. I may redo this test to see if this still tracks correctly. Because also the cam that's in there now, I don't remember what's in it now, but the more... The most power that this mule has made right now has been with the Brian Tooley cam, the big one. It made like 720 horsepower. So right now, if we look at this, it's only like 653 or so. Um, if we take, just for fun, if we were to take the, um, my train of thought, if we take the AFR heads and retest this, would this difference still remain? Because now we're making, you know, quite a bit more power like almost 60, um, would this difference still hold? That's, that'd be a great question. That'd be another test. It'd be cool to see because I know headers are not universal for this um, combination at all. So for instance, remember this one? Yeah, there it is. Remember this and you see how much it gains, right? Remember this is a 408 cubic inch engine. Let me show you this picture. And this is the one I just got done on um, Friday. This one's just a 6.2 liter um, stock besides ported heads and a GPI camshaft. Here's how much what the headers did for it. So here's the 6.2 liter, same headers that was used on the 408, the big and the small ones. As you can tell, this is shocking. The differences at the lower RPM actually closed and the differences at the higher RPM were still there. So even though on the 408, it made a huge difference all the way from pretty much 4,500 on, this one, it only picked up at the very end, but was close down low. A little strange. Each combination is a little bit different. As you could tell, it's not even close to this because this is a different engine combination. So even as I'm saying this, like the collector extensions don't gain power, 
They may gain some, but I don't think they're gaining their 20 horsepower that you wish for. But I also know it's application dependent. Each thing's got its own variable. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Remember, I'm no Superman. I do not port cast iron heads. Hope to see you guys at PRI. Several of you have asked, hey, man, you said you're going to be in room 204 on Friday the 13th between 11 and 1, but it's not showing up on the app or anything. That's right, because we reserved the room way later than they even did all their stuff. So it's not going to be there. So if you didn't know, that's where it's happening. And it won't show up on that. Sorry, it just is what it is. But it's really happening. At least as far as I know, if we go there in the dorms room, the lock, room's locked, I'd be like, oh, this is a little sad, but I don't think that's going to happen. Anyway, I guess we've got confirmation, by the way, from PRI. So it, everything's good, looking good. Hopefully I see you guys at PRI. Remember, I'm not as nice in person. I'm actually worse. I'm just kidding. Uh, feel free to say hi and shake my hand if you want to or cuss me out too. I like a good curse match. So I like to use my adjectives too. Anyway, you guys take care.